All right, Mr. Stone, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Um, why is it important that I feel connected to black African-American culture? Learn about your history. Because these schools will teach you to hate yourself, your people, your family, and your ancestors. Uh, these schools prepare you to turn against yourself and the black community for money and a title. Some students have even committed suicide as a result of their experiences in white schools. So, to make the, uh, 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 the sum this up, um, if you don't know who you are, then other people will define who you are. Um, and if other p people will seek to be superior to you, then they're going to put you in an inferior position. The best way to deal with someone who wants you to be inferior is, is to uh, deal with them with the truth. And the truth is we've never been inferior. Even during slavery time, um, during our enslavement, we weren't inferior. Uh, we created a lot of things um, since we've been in America and since we've been on this planet Earth. Like I said earlier, it could be math, science, uh, 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 astrology. Uh, there are things that we've done that will blow your mind if you took the time to study our history. Uh, I'm learning things that blow my mind every single day about black history and about myself. These are our ancestors. And they're people to be proud of. But if you're ashamed of who you are, how can you relate to other people who are proud of who they are? This is just a way of, of, of letting you know your greatness so you can interact with other people on an equal level. Now, I also have another question for you because I see it happen a lot. There are families, let's say there's siblings. You may see one sibling become successful and that one that one sibling may say to themselves, Why do I have to give back? And why should I help people who have came from the same thing that I came from? Um, then the question becomes who else is in a better position to help? Um we put out, we do a lot of after school program, me, me and other people in the community and people that I work with. We invest time and money into children. Um, but we don't get a return on our investment. In other words, all the money you put into after school programs for children, all the academic programs you create for children, you don't see a return on it in the community. The reason you don't see a return on the money we spend and our efforts is because the children we help graduate and leave the community and never come back to help. That's not fair. That's not fair for the children who are here, who, 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 who need role models. That's not fair for children who need after school programs and who need to see a college graduate. So, the question becomes, is it worth educating someone who's just going to graduate and leave? You don't even get the benefit of their knowledge and their experience. Another community gets the, gets the, uh, the benefit of their knowledge and their, and their expertise now, and not the community that, that made the investment with the children. Now, that's why companies want you to... Uh, to make sure that once you graduate, if you pay for your education, that you come back to the job and give time so they can get some of their investment back from the expertise that you got based on the work we put in. So what we're asking and what I ask students now that we work with is to think about once you graduate uh, and, and once you um, start a career to come back and do something in the neighborhood where in which you got that um, those skills for um, and that help for because no one made it by themselves um, especially I'm um, someone from the neighborhood excellent answer now uh, you touched a little bit on it and this is partly how I feel mm -hmm. um, as a young black man I've uh, I've studied I study a lot I've went to school mm -hmm. 
but I have a past that I feel as though will always catch up to me. If, and no matter how hard I work, <laughs> no matter how prestigious the school may be, or how good I'm doing, mm -hmm. it's still that thought, you know what, I have a record, there's mm -hmm. hundreds of kids like me mm -hmm. doing the same thing that mm -hmm. b will success in their school and in their major mm -hmm. that will get hired before me. So why even, mm -hmm. why even do it? That's that's an excellent that's an excellent point, um, and I didn't realize how deep a problem that was until um, one day uh, the city was was and hired all these white folks to come in our neighborhood to tear buildings down. Now we fought with the city to, to to make them hire some people in our neighborhood, you know, to do the same job. We, we definitely know how to tear buildings down. Um, so. I had organized rallies uh, at, the, at, the, uh, at the neighborhood playground uh, for people to come out to sign up for these jobs. The first rally we had, we had over 100 people. Um, and, we, and they were ready to protest, and they were ready to fight for these jobs, they would get jobs. The moment that I mentioned uh, that they had to come clean um, in terms of drugs, the next meeting we had three people. This is a very uh, deep issue in terms of employment. Uh, uh, our people are being left out of jobs because we can't put down a uh, 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 reefer for a couple of days or we can't stop getting high for a couple of days. Now, on the other hand, if we control industry where other people control industry that's going on in their neighborhood, then we can hire people ourselves who we know can do the job, um, who we can give breaks to, who we can uh, 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 help in terms of people who have past records and stuff like that. That situation can only get better if we start creating our own jobs. It won't get better no other way. If people don't want to hire you when you're squeaky clean and don't have a background, they're definitely not going to hire you when you have a background. So we have to create our own industry, our own jobs, our own businesses, so that we know, we know more who's going to come to the job and work, and, and who's not going to come to the job and work, you know, and we can give more chances and opportunities to people while they, while they put themselves together. But we have to do that, and that's why we have to control the education that our children are giving. So the education our children are getting now, or, uh, and the people that go on and, and receive degrees, the education is based on working for other people as opposed to creating industries and jobs. And we have to create our own industries and jobs to be real men and women, and to compete with everyone else economically in the world. I like that, Stone. That was excellent. You not only answered the question, but you gave a possible solution to the problem. Um, with that, I have uh, another question, uh, pretty much about the education system. Like, what should we do about the public school si school system? Like, what do you feel should be done? Because Drew, you had an excellent answer on as far as us having a record and what the problems may be for employment. I would like to see what your thoughts would be on how, what, what we could do to help fix our public school districts and, and, and the systems and the way they work. Well, the, the biggest problem is, wow, uh, the biggest problem that we have is, is that the people who control our children's education don't believe that racism exists. And I'm talking about black women. Our black women have to understand what's happening to our children. And why? We have to figure out as black men how to help black women more in raising our children. We have to we have to um, understand uh, uh, our women uh, to the point where where we can help our children and be in a better position to help our children and not let little simple things get in the way. So 
sent a mother sending her child to school, and she don't believe there's anything wrong with leaving black history out of school. She don't believe there's anything wrong with black our children being two or three grades behind white children. You know, she don't believe there's anything wrong with um, with, with white children wanting to be thugs. But she don't think there's anything wrong, and there's nothing wrong with being a thug if you're an intelligent thug. Um, and she don't think there's anything wrong with uh, the children not doing homework after school. Our women have to become more involved in what's going on in schools. Um, now, the only way we're going to get a good education is, is, is when we start homeschooling all our children. Uh, and until we're in a position to control schools, we're going to have to homeschool our children. We're going to have to, instead of spending money on a hundred fifty dollar pair of sneakers, hire a tutor for that month. You know, those are things that we have to do in order to help our children succeed. And we got to believe in them. If you don't believe in your children, and if you don't believe in your children, then you're not going to make that kind of financial investment to hire a tutor. You're not going to make the kind of investment you need uh, to homeschool them. So we got to believe in ourselves, and we got to believe in our children. And I know I shouldn't dog the women, but our women are the ones who are really having come, come to grips with the racism our children are facing in the school systems and, and then the racism that we face in society, especially with our males. Um, so they have to come to grips. They have to allow us to help them raise our children, and they have to become more accountable in terms of the kind of environment they're raising, of raising our children in, and taking more accountability, the kind of education they're allowing our children to receive in public schools. Now, I have one, one question. When uh, you spoke, who was listening? When you said who was listening? Well, it was just my students in the past, um, so that's why we're doing YouTube videos. So hopefully, more people will get this information that um, that, that I've been putting out for the last uh, about 30 years. So hopefully, more people will get this information. And I, I have I have one question that sums up a lot of questions in one, and that would be. How does this really work, and what difference is it going to make? I ask myself that question a, a lot of times, and God always answers the question for me. I'm a very spiritual person, and uh, whenever I get down, God sends me a message. I, I remember one time when I, I felt uh, really down, and I thought that this was a waste of time, and I had to fight too many people. You know, you have to fight people uh, to put out the truth especially when people believe in, 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 in lies. Uh, so I have to fight to put information out to our children. And I got to the point where I didn't think it was worth it anymore. Um, when I was at Temple University, and I was president of the Black Student Union, I had a mandate. And the mandate was that involved children who were hooky in school, and they were hooky at Temple University. Um, and my mandate was to grab these children up and take them to classroom. Um, at that time, the white people's response to black children who being in that temple was to lock them up, of course. Uh, so we had to beat the police officers to the children and and take them to classroom. And, and all of us did it. We had professors that did it. Um, and we had professors who took children to their offices. We had uh, students who took children to class with them. I'm pretty sure you can't do it now. Um, they, they, they probably outlaw that now at, at the university. At the university, white people eventually catch up to what you're doing, especially for something to help uh, uh, black people. Um, one day when I was going down, this six foot five guy walked up to me. I think it was the guy, with me. and he said, "Man, I know you don't remember me because I was a little child." He used to grab me up and take me to class with you. He said, man, I just want to thank you for what you did, man, for us back there, and for me in particular. And then he said, man, we used to say, hurry up, y'all, run. They come a little strong fat, man. They're going to take us to class with us. Run, y'all. And he said, you know, that we used to chase them. And he remembered a lot more than I remember. 
he said we should chase him and take him to uh, the classroom. And, and it meant a difference to him in his life. So God always sent me someone to remind me or a message that what I'm doing uh, means something. So um, when, I, when I hear stories like that, it's, it, it's all worthwhile to me. Uh, what, what, what I'm doing and the battles that, that, that we battle every single day. All right, thank you, Mr. Stone.